Okay, so now let's look at a, a software product. And in this case, we're going to say it's a subscription, a, a B2C, so um, a business to consumer subscription product. So you're selling direct to customers. You're not selling B2B, which is direct to businesses. So like that's enterprise software. This is just a consumer software, like something like Spotify or, or, or something else. Um, but in this scenario, we're saying that uh, one month of our, of our software costs $149. So um, maybe this is something like some heavy investment research, or maybe it's um, an email marketing product or something like this. Um, so it's $149 per month. And when we break down the cost of goods sold, the cost of goods sold for software, it's not like a, a physical product. Like that's where you have to manufacture the product and then ship it. Software, obviously there's no shipping, there's no manufacturing because it's already built. So the direct costs, the cost of goods sold for software are usually hosting. So you have to pay some, it's usually like Amazon Web Services or, or through Microsoft or one of these other kind of hosting companies. And you usually have um, client services. So these specific numbers um, don't make sense on an individual basis, but at scale, let's say you have you know, a thousand active customers, you would just look at, okay, how much am I paying per month to the Amazon Web Services? Um, what's the cost of our customer support team? And you would divide that by the number of orders and you could come up with averages. And these averages would help you get to a gross margin. And software products usually have gross margins around 80%. Uh, can be a little higher or lower, but that's sort of the range that, that you usually see, kind of 80, sometimes 90%. So this makes sense um, directionally. But let's say to get this customer, we had to spend $352 in marketing. So that's our blended customer acquisition cost. Um, blended means it's all your channels combined. You can look at your marketing cost by channel. You can say, okay, on Facebook, it costs this. On this other channel, it costs this. On this other channel, it costs this. They're all going to have different efficiencies. But I'm saying um, blended means all the channels. So everything you spent divided by, by all your new customers. So that's your customers coming through paid channels and your customers coming through free channels, um, which we call organic customers. So I'm saying your blended CAC is 352. So on a one month basis, on the first month that our customer buys, we lose $226 because we only made $126 of profit of gross margin. And so we're actually in the red. But for software products, this is obviously completely, completely normal. And the real question here is how many months did they stick around as a subscriber? So um, let's say our monthly churn rate, so the percentage of customers that cancel on any given month is 13%. So how long can we expect uh, the average customer to stay on? So there's a really simple formula when you have a monthly churn. It's just one divided by the, the monthly churn rate. And so you get an average here of 7.7 .7 months. If you were to do all the math and calculate everything, it would break down to a 7.7 .7 month average. And so now all we need to do is multiply our average monthly revenue or average order value by the average customer lifetime. And then you have the customer lifetime revenue, which is $1,146. So hosting support the same. We just multiply it by the number of months. And in this case, you can see that 7.7 um, .7 months at uh, our gross margin of 84% is $966 of lifetime gross profit for a customer. And again, lifetime gross profit is your customer lifetime value. This is a target for every business needs to be studying their customer lifetime value to see if their marketing uh, investments are making sense. So now that we see um, that our customer lifetime value is 966, well, Obviously, in month two, month three, month four, month five, there's no marketing cost. So the only marketing investment we made was to get them to buy for the very first month. So your CAC is still 352. And then in this scenario, if you look at your customer lifetime value and you subtract your CAC, well, we actually made $614 on our relationship with this one individual customer. So the unit economics for this software product are very um, favorable. And in software specifically, 
one really helpful metric is the lifetime value to CAC ratio. So what you do here is you just take your post, sorry, you just take your customer lifetime value and you divide it by your uh, customer acquisition cost and we see it's 2.75. Um, usually sort of uh, good software products have a LTV to CAC ratio of three or better directionally. Sometimes in the early days, um, two can be okay, but as you scale up, you obviously want to make sure that you have a healthy margin of profit on your relationship with each customer. These customers are very sticky. So um, some of the best software products even have um, LTV to CAC ratios of five or 10 or even more. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention is that if you, um, monthly churn rates are okay, um, but the real best way to look at uh, customer retention are customer retention cohorts. I'll include a link to how to actually cohortize the, the retention of your customers. I have a whole another video. It's kind of more how we look at it in terms of the VC startup world. Customer cohorts just show if you have customers purchasing in a starting month, how long do they stick around on average? They work for subscription products really well. Um, they can work for um, marketplaces, platforms, e-commerce businesses. It's a, a really nice way to sort of visualize how sticky your customers are. And the reason why they work well for, for software products sort of better than just the churn rate is because churn rates usually vary over time. So in the first couple of months, you might see a lot of churn, but then customers who've stuck around for let's say 15 months might have an extremely low churn. So uh, it's not good to just completely generalize the churn rate every single month. It's better to sort of look at churn uh, as it changes over the lifetime of the customer. But for simplicity, this is okay for, for this model right here.